Live from ClickOrlando.com, this is News 6 at 5.30. This is a News 6 Plus takeover. Here now is Matt Austin and Ginger Gadston with Florida's 4th Estate. Hey everybody and welcome to another great edition of Florida's 4th Estate. So glad to have you with us this week. We are talking about our favorite places to visit in Florida. Just our little, some of them are hidden gems and some of them you already know about, but we're going to tell you why we love them so much. But coming up a little bit later on, we're going to talk to a young lady who came to Florida because she wanted to visit some relatives and a lot of people come here. You know, she's one of millions of people. She flew in, couldn't get out. She got out, but with strangers. This story is my nightmare ending up with 12 other people you it doesn't don't turn know. out to be a nightmare though it turns out pretty <laughs> no well. but it, it's i'm ginger gadsden <laughs> hey glad you're with us my name is matt austin yeah we're talking about a road trip that had a good ending and it got us thinking what are the best road trips in florida the mm -hmm. places in florida that you just have to visit and so that's what we're talking about today yeah best road trips in florida and we're going to start off with one it's a little touristy okay but once we get through that <laughs> We're going to be out of the touristy places, but we just had to mention it. Okay, so this place is cool, it is historic, and it is most certainly irreverent. It's kind of crazy. Mm. You know I'm talking about Key West. It is the southernmost point in the beautiful state of Florida. And Key West, there's so much stuff to do. I mean, people come from all over the world. They take their cruises down there. And it's just a fantastic place to visit. The Austins have done several trips down there, all right? And we have a few of our favorites that I want to list off. They have an aquarium down there, Gigi, where you can touch all sorts of things. You can touch the rays and all the little things. My kids really had a great time. You can also check out the Hemingway House, which is super fun. But my favorite thing to do down in Key West undoubtedly is to go down to where the cruise ships are and check out the street performers they have some of the best performers oh, yeah. on earth there i mean they do crazy stuff they're very interactive and super yeah. fun so key west had to make the list this place looks like heaven on earth but it's in Florida. And I've lived in Florida almost nine years now, and it's my first time going to one of the Gulf Coast beaches. I'm talking about Pensacola. I've never seen water, and I travel a lot. I've not seen water this color ever. It did not look real. That turquoise and the blue that collide, it is just like heaven. And if you go to any beaches, you have to go to Pensacola Beach. I avoided it for years, and I don't know why. It takes some getting to for me, but the water was just perfect. The sand was nice. The, everything. My whole family went, almost my whole family. We do the summer vacation every year. That's a lot of family. And I, I'm from Charleston, where we have some of the best beaches in the world, I think. you know. But Pensacola Beach blew us all away because we don't get that kind of water in Charleston. And man, if you're going to have a beach home anywhere in Florida, I would want it to be on Pensacola Beach. So there are really two different types of scenery to enjoy in Florida. You can do the beaches like we were talking about, but I would say my absolute favorite is a lake with some big, beautiful, mossy trees around it. That is my kind of Florida scene that I, I just love as I, I grew up closer to the beach down south. So when you think about a place like that, there's really one place in particular that tourists think about, and many in Central Florida do as well. It's Mount Dora. Ginger, we're heading to the mountains, okay? This is a historic town. I'm not really into in antiquing, but if you're into yeah. antiques, Mount Dora is a great place to go. There are delicious restaurants there. Oh, yeah. There's a gorgeous lake, Lake Dora there, and it's just a very historic, very fun place to visit. It's known as you know a place where they constantly have festivals. During the nice times of year, there's just a festival pretty much every single weekend. It's a gorgeous place to visit. The people there are just genuinely nice and it mm -hmm. almost kind of 
gives you that southern town kind of vibe and it's very close if you live in orlando it's a half hour away so it's really easy to get there ginger i don't know how much time you spent in mount dora but one of my absolute most charming places in florida and you're right you just stroll around town and the people are friendly it's just one of those quaint places if you hear about it you're like yeah but once you go you understand why people go back and they have these little you know these little inns where you can stay on the lake that's also delightful yeah great Love place it. great place to visit and much different than any other place on this list yeah. and way different than a lot not touristy at all i wouldn't say no it's not but perfect taking you back to a beach sticking with the historic <laughs> theme i'm going up very close to the state line with georgia past jacksonville to a place called Amelia Island, Fernandina mm -hmm. Beach area. It is a gorgeous place on the east coast of Florida. If you're looking for an east coast adventure, Amelia Island is a very cool place. Different landscape. It's got the beach, but on the inside, it's more sort of that swampy uh, river look, if you're into that. Incredible places to eat. Great seafood. There's a place called Timoti's that is fantastic. I mean, it'll just melt your face off. It's so good. It's just delicious food out there. And uh, my, it's one of my family's favorite places to go for a quick beach trip over to Amelia Island. And this place is so beautiful and people like it so much that, get this, Gigi, eight different flags have flown over Amelia Island. It has been a part of eight <laughs> different uh, either countries it's or... Ours. Want it. Everybody wants a piece of Amelia <laughs> Islands. It's been around for a long time and it is a super cool place to visit if you ever get the chance. Imagine walking along the beach and you put your toes in the sand and it just sinks because it's like powdered sugar. I'm That's there. Siesta Key. That is Siesta Key Beach. It is perhaps the most beautiful, serene. I know I said that about Pensacola as well, but this really, it's a different vibe. It's a different feel. And it's almost like you pick up the sand and you're like, is this even happening? Is, is this what is sand this should feel life? like every, yeah, is this what sand should feel like every, can I eat this? Can I sprinkle this on some cookies? Can I sprinkle <laughs> this? I, it's like, it is that good. And it's always written up in when they do best beaches, it, they always mention Siesta Key and how could they not? It is glorious. There's just so many oh, oh, very cool places in that particular area. And the thing you like about them is they're not built up. Mm -hmm. You know, like if you go to yeah. Siesta Key, there are a few places to stay, but you'd usually just VRBO a house or something or do an Airbnb out there and do like you said, you cook. There are some good places oh. to eat out there. But for the most part, you're just enjoying incredible beaches with a gorgeous sand. And yeah. it's really not that far away. That's what maybe between Pensacola and the Siesta Key pick is for oh. a lot of people getting out to Pensacola Beach is a headache. I mean, imagine if you oh. live in South Florida and you try to get up to Pensacola Beach, you could be driving nine hours to get out there. So we live in Central Florida, and we were in the car for like six hours. I'm like, are we still going? Are we, are we still, still in, in Florida? Florida? Right. <laughs> are we there yet? I know we turned into children after about three hours. Oh my gosh. At my house. Yeah, but it's worth it. It's worth every moment you it spend is. getting. There. And how blessed are we to get to to get to live in a state? where there are so many, it was so hard to put together this list. And then we got down to five and we're like, how do we choose a number one no, and a and, number five? And I know there are people out there who, who say, hey, you left this off. You left this off. I want to hear from those people because then we may discover some places that are new, especially if they are truly hidden gems and off the beaten path. I want to know about it because I want to visit them. That's right. And we love hearing when we're wrong. So please. <laughs> <laughs> Let us know. Hey, we have a great story coming up for you after the break. Imagine your flight gets canceled and you find yourself on a crazy road trip with a bunch of strangers. It has gone viral and we have one of the people at the center of it coming up next.
Hey, welcome back to Florida Sport This Date, everyone. You know, it's the time of year where people are traveling and going over the river and through the woods to get to grandma's house. But what if I told you you had to go to grandma's house with complete strangers, a dozen of them? Matt, would Grandma's you do not going to be happy at all about that <laughs> when you bring all these complete strangers over. So it's a crazy story. It's kind of like a planes, trains, and automobiles story that happened in Florida. This flight got canceled. And so all of these strangers had to figure out a way to get from Orlando up to Tennessee. And the only way to do it was to rent this huge bus and just kind of pool money together. And the person at the center of all this documenting it is a famous TikToker. Uh, TikTok her. She's a doctor and she's on TikTok. <laughs> Elena Story <laughs> is a TikToker. She's big on social media. And uh, this story has just gone crazy. Oh so first off, Elena, thank you so much for joining us for Florida's Fourth Estate. Yeah, thanks for having me. Oh, it's our pleasure. So, okay, take us through <laughs> how this all started. You're at the ticket counter. When did you find out that your flight was canceled? And uh, just okay. take us through the whole story. So um, it's, what is it, Sunday night, um, we're about to see, like, our flight gets delayed once, and then we're thinking we're about to board the plane, um, and so, like, people are literally lining up about to, like, get on the plane, and we find out our flight is canceled, and so everyone's kind of just like, oh my gosh, like, what are we about to do now, um, and so, and, like, all the potential passengers on the plane, we go downstairs to the frontier desk to figure out, like, what are our options, um, there weren't really any at the time, um, and Amy, who was on the van she kind of like yelled out to everyone to let us know like they're not doing anything for us like we can get a van if you want and my mom and carlos the driver and his wife had kind of been talking about doing it so they all just kind of like merged together um and you heard one person talking about it and just want to join in so yeah it's kind of like a joint effort and then our group is sort of morphed yeah when did it become apparent to you guys that this was going to be a real thing like there was a moment where you have to make a decision you're kind of on the fence you're like here are all these people i don't know but i need to get home yeah. um it happened like very very quickly so from the time like amy yelled out that we didn't really have any <laughs> options to the time of us getting on the van filming the video and everything that may have been max 20 25 minutes um so i was kind of like back seat of it all I let my mom go handle all of it and so all of a sudden I see my mom like walking the other direction with all these strangers and she's like Elena let's go we're headed home we're taking a van and I'm like okay she's like with everybody and I was like what <laughs> like are you kidding me so we go downstairs um they rent it and then this whole time I actually met up with Michaela in the bathroom the one who's going to UT and I was like girl this is crazy this is nuts like we don't know each other and she sort of say like the same sentiment so we just we got in the van and left. Like it happened very, very quickly. And I mean, in the middle you were of with your mom, though. And my godmother. Yeah, I was and with God, yeah, three of yeah. us. So it wasn't just you, but in the middle of all of this, okay. you decide I'm going to make a video of it. Like yeah. if I'm at the airport, I'm stressed immediately. And then my flight gets canceled. Now I'm at like DEFCON 5 stressed. <laughs> And I'm not thinking about that. In the middle of all this, you should just start interviewing people though. Hi, my name is Lexi and I'm possibly gonna miss my finals, but it's fine. <laughs> my name's um, Robin and I'm here for my son's custody battle. My name's Q and we're stuck. Bop. I'm, uh, my name is Seth and I got stuck here in Orlando after visiting some friends. Hi, I'm Adolf. I'm from Mexico, from Cancun. It came to here, Orlando, Florida? what is it, Florida, Florida, to Knoxville, Tennessee, but the frontliner it canceled our flight, so we rent a van. Yeah, <laughs> yep, that's exactly how it went. I mean, I wasn't like, I'm the type of person, that, that sort of stuff doesn't really stress me out. I'm like, well, it'll get taken care of one way or another, and it got taken care of, so I was like, I always am looking for new ways to make content, and whenever that was happening, I was just like, well, I mean, let's see if everybody could join in, and it helped break the ice. So, yeah. Oh my God. Okay, so this is how I know we're different, Elena, because I would be documenting it only so they could have proof of the person who murdered me. Because I would be <laughs> sure that somebody in that van was gonna kill me. I thought about that. <laughs> Explain more. Did you have that thought? Because I feel yeah. like I too would be like, okay, there's definitely a murderer or a creeper oh, yeah. on this bus. I was definitely a little concerned, and then like. 
within our first 30 minutes, we had this, like the TikTok was up and everyone was calling like Johan and Adolf, the Russian spies. And it's the start of a scary movie. <laughs> and we're on the van and I looked out the window like, through the windshield and it's like such thick fog. You can barely like see in front of you. So I'm like, oh yeah, this is, this is where it all goes left. That's how but, it ends right there. Yeah. But everyone was, they were great, but yeah, I definitely it crossed my mind. I'm human. <laughs> okay. So there are 12 of you in this 15 passenger bus, right? Or 13, van. including me. Yeah, 13, 13 on a 15 passenger van. Yeah. Who decides, okay, we have to, because just going with a couple of people, you, you decide, okay, I'm going to stop here at some, or we're going to eat now. Were there any, um, like, you know, rules that were put into place before you guys went on? Like, okay, we're not stopping at every exit. We're only going to stop once for the bathroom. What happened? I mean, not there were no rules when we first got on like we didn't even have time to even think about doing something like that um but no I mean I feel like when you're on a van with strangers like everyone was just considerate of each other um but I will say Michelle aka farm babe did have to go to the bathroom a little more times than my mother would have liked um and she definitely got snapped out <laughs> I knew of it. I knew it <laughs> okay no I mean there weren't any rules really I mean, Ginger yeah. they're all adults like nobody's there like did everybody go potty before no but we then left? you know somebody's gonna have a big gulp and then by the next exit they realize that was a bad decision and so and now everyone went? has to stop again exactly okay so was okay so there was uh, the person who needed to go potty a little bit more was there a talker someone who you just wanted to stop talking okay I'm so very much appreciative of everyone who I was in that van with. They made the experience great. Come on now. Miss Amy, the Marine Corps, her voice carries like no other. And our, our video was going viral, like in real time. And so like, we're sitting in the van and like every 30 seconds, she's like, we're at this many views, we're at this many views. And she's reading the comments out loud. And like, I was like, I'm so happy that I can give you guys this experience because it is fun. But I was like, I, I, you really like this one. You really like it. <laughs> that is so funny. So, uh, okay, tell great. me. She's great. That's she sounds awesome. wonderful. She sounds loud, but wonderful. So <laughs> when you're in the bus and you're traveling, okay, mm -hmm. tell me there's something a little more romantic and movie-ish about it than just everybody sits on their phones. Like, are you guys talking? Are you singing? Give me a feel for the whole vibe of this random stranger bus trip. Um, uncomfy and very noisy, um, <laughs> primarily because of the TikTok. Like when I say like the comments were being read out loud the entire van ride, like the, it was like, I'm listening to stats running. Like that's how like often they were talking about this. And then like, yeah, everyone did get to know each other a little bit. Like I sit next to Q, we chatted back and forth a lot about like what I do and like just life in general, joking back and forth. Cause we're the same age. And then, like, my mom talked to Johan and Adolf a lot about, like, their upbringing and, like, their story and stuff. But, yeah, I mean, there was definitely a lot of chatter. We didn't really listen to music. We didn't really sing. Um, wow. Just, we did talked you, you played a lot. no games. Oh, see, Matt's hoping for some kind of rom-com to come well, out of yeah, this. Yeah, that's what I was thinking. She's Man. like, Hugh was, he was right next to me, and he was my age. Is Hugh, like, is this a possibility going down the road? Like, what no, are we thinking with Hugh? No, that's definitely, it's definitely a bud of mine. I'll leave that part to Hollywood if they want to pick it up and make it a rom-com. But not on our end. Okay. All right. I mean, Just I feel checking. like, you know, it happened a little while ago and people are still talking about it because that was Thanksgiving. So Christmas is coming up. Do you guys, are you traveling again? Are you flying Frontier? Which I would say no. Okay. Um, I mean, how are you getting there? <laughs> um, we're actually just staying around like local, but in terms of Frontier, I say like, oh, I would never fly with them again. I'm 23 years old. They have cheap flights. I like to go places. <laughs> so if I can, and I book my flights the day before most times. So oh, wow. I might try it maybe one, one more time. I Probably have not, said, uh, let me tell you as someone who's much older than you, <laughs> I have said many times, I'm never going to fly a frontier. I am never going to fly spirit again. And you know, and when it's happened? like $400 versus $60, I'm guess what I'm yeah. flying. I can pack well in a carry on. Right. <laughs> Smash it all into a backpack, yeah. wear like yep. four outfits so you don't as have to. As long as like, they're not asking you to it. fly the plane, you're good. Elena, thank you so much for talking to us. We appreciate it. And best thank of luck you with your career. Excited to see the Netflix Yay. documentary, 13, <laughs> really I, we'll I so. 13 Strangers. <laughs> Maybe.
<laughs> Sounds like a horror so. flick. I don't know. Yeah, it does. It does. <laughs> Thank you, Elena. Bye. Thank you, guys. Bye. And thank you for watching Florida's Fourth Estate. You can download it from wherever you listen to podcasts or watch anytime on News 6 Plus.